are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yeah, you like that? That's uh, that, that's some fancy stuff there, Stephen. Uh, if you're listening on the podcast, this makes no sense to you. But if you're watching on YouTube, <laughs> fancy little graphics here. That Very. man that you are hearing on the other line is a, a, a forgotten voice, a voice that we haven't had on here for too long. That's Stephen Brooks of 24-7 Sports. Stephen, before I ask how you're doing, I got to be a company man here and let the people know that today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered the season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. This episode is also brought to you by Wondering How Stephen Brooks is Doing. Stephen, how you doing, man? You doing okay? Yeah, man, I'm doing great. I'm happy to be, I don't know, the first. Or I'm among the first uh, to, to pilot this new uh, the first. video format. The first. All right. Well, the damn, first. I'm, damn, I'm honored uh, <laughs> to be that guy and uh, doing well. Like I mentioned before we started, uh, after the NCAA tournament, uh, my batteries were dead and I just kind of yeah. disappeared for like four or five days. And I'm back now and, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm deep into spring football stuff. And uh, and then once that's done, I'm going to disappear for a little bit longer and then uh, be full go into, into summer football and all that and recruiting and this and that. But yeah, for now, I'm doing good. Uh, about a week ago, not as good. Sure. Well, what better way to get back to not feeling good and just feeling drained than a 20 to 25 minute conversation with no, you? This truly, is refreshing. Uh, Come on. Welcome back on the show, man. Uh, great to have you back. It's just looking fantastic, to too. Got a face for YouTube. Um, Steven, spring football, just like you said, has started. And it's, it hasn't been going on for too long. I mean, you guys just got media availability this week. Help me help you. What storyline are you already sick of hearing about from like fans like me or just you know, outside voices? What are you already getting tired about with uh, spring football at East Lansing? Mm. Uh, you know? Probably just like, and this is every year, but it's just like, you know, the just knocking down our door of which young guy is, is bursting out of the scene or, or just whether it's yeah. a true freshman or a redshirt freshman, sophomore, some just who are the young guy, you know, and it's like, well, not everybody is just day one, like breaking out or like the transfers, new guys in general, mostly, whether it's the true freshman uh, who enrolled or the transfers, it's just, it, and it's natural, of course. I mean, it's the new shiny toy. Like, what's that all about? Tell me about that. What's going on there? Yeah. Um, but you, you sort of feel like just like pump the brakes a little bit, like, let these guys get their feet under them. And uh, odds are, you know, especially the freshmen, a lot of them aren't going to be stars right away, you know, and the transfers, as we saw last year, not all of them were better than the guys they had. You know, you look like a, you look at a Cal Halliday or just uh, other situations um, where the guys that were already there won those jobs. Obviously Peyton Dorn is sort of the, the, the poster boy of that um, beating out Anthony Russo last year. So that stuff I guess is a little annoying, but I do understand it. And I don't think it's unique to this year either. Yeah, because like what we're just replacing last year's hoopla of okay, is it going to be Thorne or Russo? And it's probably not as intense, but I think the conversation around the running back is definitely like the, the probably the headliner going into the season. So uh, on the record, it, it's been interesting. Like Mel and and company doesn't say a lot on record about certain players, but what they have talked mm. about is Noah Kim and Davion Prim, like probably a second, if not third string quarterback, and probably a third, if not fourth, if not maybe even fifth string running back. Like how, I, I want to focus on Prim here in the running backs. Like how much of a grain of salt do you take that with? Or do you think there's some seriousness to Davion Prim cracking himself into the, maybe the top three running back rotation? I, I don't know. How, how do yeah. you read the whole situation? I think those are two different things. I think with, with Kim, it's sort of just throwing a guy a bone, you know, that it's a good okay. worker that, that does his thing in behind the scenes. Um, to, and, and Mel Tucker has done that um, since he's been here. He's always been like this low key Noah Kim fan. Right. And just out of nowhere, he'll just bring him up. So reading into that, um, I think that he sees him sort of as just like the ideal backup, like a guy that could go in there, would, would stay composed, could win you a game, you know, if you got to put him in a halftime. Uh, gotcha. Maybe you got to play in the next week. I think he just sort of views him as that textbook backup that you'd love to have. And I think he's kind of trying to hold on to him was when he's throwing him these bones. Um, that's just my speculation, but that's the way I read into that. I do think Prim is a little more legit in the sense of um, not that Kim isn't doing well or anything like that, but mm -hmm. just in the sense of a, of a guy who might actually impact this season um, and beyond. So I, we, we, I started hearing a little bit about him 
um, last year, you know, uh, and then uh, William Pigro leaves and everything and sort of on his way out, he yeah. was like, you know, don't sleep on him. He was also big on Eaglin too, the guys that we really hadn't heard anything about. Okay. Um, so I was like, okay, you know, and then you hear it this year and you heard it from Jay Johnson said he was a guy to watch out for. And, and Mel Tucker said it the other day, and he does just keep coming up um, with a position like that right now that I think is pretty wide open. Uh, I, I buy into that a little more in terms of just being a, a real thing. Um, not just sort of a spring, you know, um, feel good story, you know, trying to, trying to, um, you know, pump somebody up, you know, that they sure. feel like needs it or something. It happens, but it happens with every staff, every program, every spring. It's, you always got to be aware of like the red herrings and the, and the false, you know, breadcrumb trails and things like that. With right. Davion Prim, I don't think it is. I think it's legit. I think he's very much in the mix with this thing. And I don't know if they're, I don't know if they had to start a game today. I mean, Elijah has the most experience in the system. So maybe mm-hmm. he'd get that first, uh, first possession or something, but I don't think there's much of a clear cut, um, pecking order there right now at all and then you've got another one coming obviously this summer and broussard right and so like the the whole running back thing fascinates me too and it's not just the guys that they're adding but it's the fact that everyone's still kind of here like you know okay obviously the transfers broussard burger all right hey prim he's getting talked about you got eli collins you got jordan simmons you got donovan eagle you got harold Joyner. if you want to throw his name i'm holding seven fingers up that are, 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 are one or two or three of these guys maybe going to leave as spring ball goes forward? Like, would that be a, a shock at all to you? Or is that pretty much what we're going to be seeing here after some spring practices kind of shake out in, in your opinion, of course, it's not a guarantee, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. I mean, co- common logic says, yes. I mean, there's mm-hmm. just, there's so many running backs uh, guys want to play. Yeah. And especially yeah, coming off last year where Kenneth Walker just sucked up all the oxygen, you know, rightfully so. That's I, I right. should say. Um, but this, there it was a lot of work to go around when you had that guy back there. And uh, I think we all understand that. Um, so that you, you could understand a lot of those guys sticking it out and saying, okay, k has gone. This is going to be my shot, or at least mm-hmm. to be a 50, 50 guy with somebody else, you know, we can at least split it a little more even than it was last year. So let me stick around and, and fight my way up the ladder and see where, see where it takes me. Um, yeah, though, I do think just, that's just the way of it, the way of the world right now that, that when you have that many running backs, it's just, you even playing three regularly in a season is almost impossible to do. Coaches will always say, yeah, you can get three in there and it never works. You can get two, you can keep mm-hmm. two happy realistically. And the third guy is like, you know, um, just sort of, you know, muttering to himself and then he gets in, you know, 10 snaps a game, if that. So that just, that realistically, that doesn't ever work. And that's just kind of the game now. I'm not, I haven't heard anything. I don't, yeah. I haven't, nobody's told me that this guy is on the way out or this guy isn't happy or anything like that, but just observing the way of the world right now and with the ability to transfer and play right away for guys who haven't already used that. Um, I think that's pretty, a pretty likely scenario that at least one of those guys leaves, like I said, especially with Broussard coming in now as well. And do you think any could possibly move to offensive line because you just wrote a story and it's also been reported that MSU does not have a lot of offensive linemen this spring. So on a more serious note, like, they're going to be getting guys back, whether it be from injury or Brian Green from the transfer portal joining the program. Like, is there any concern to this? What I think seven offensive linemen were practicing the other day, or is this just like yeah. n- nothing to worry about? Everything will be fine by fall. How do you? As I was writing that, yeah, I, and thinking about it, I I do think like, I think folks should should put uh, should mark this down, you know, and and potentially revisit it just because um, they're it's not an emergency in the sense of like, there's no plan. There's no plan. There's no way out. You know, there mm-hmm. are guys coming. They're just hurt right now. Other yeah. guys are coming. You mentioned Brian green. I expect him to absolutely be a two deep uh, player, if not a starter. Um, and then uh, the freshmen, you know, some of them might factor in the four man freshman class, probably not right away. Probably more like the red shirt freshman class uh, from 2021. And, and maybe some other guys like a Dallas Fincher um, who's, who's been around a little bit longer. This hasn't played a bunch. But yeah, so all that to say, I do think it could be concerning because it's not just your five. You want those five guys to work together, obviously, but they right. can't even do enough 11 on 11 right now to get the rest of the team better, you know, and, and just do their full 11 on 11, full speed, full go, full contact type of stuff. They, they're doing some. You can't wipe all of that out, obviously. But when you have yeah. seven healthy offensive linemen, um, of course, the spring game in a traditional sense is probably out the window. Um, they haven't said sure. that officially yet, but there's no way you, you just, you literally can't field two offensive lines. So I don't know how you're going to play a game. Um, I assume that'll be much more of the open practice type of deal we saw last year. Um, and it's just like last year in the sense that they had like six linebackers last year. You can't really split those up between two teams and play a game. You can't do this either. 
Um, but, but to your point, yeah, I, I, I do think it could be a concern because it's far reaching like that. You know, so these running backs are trying to figure out who's who's who and what's what, and they don't have they're not getting as many full team reps or even like half line or just inside run drills where it's just O line, D line, linebackers, right. running backs, and you know, all that type of stuff. Um, and I don't even think that's the main concern. I do think the main concern is just getting these guys better, getting the offensive linemen reps and specifically getting them reps together. You know, uh, Kenneth Walker uh, made up for a lot of mistakes last year. They were better last year. I'm, I'm giving them that credit, but I still think at their best, they were probably an average Big Ten line. So and That's Kenneth fair. Walker made them look really, really good at times. So without that guy, um, you know, maybe there's another one of him on the roster. I highly doubt that, you know, just in terms of somebody that can erase those mistakes, go off script and turn nothing into just a masterpiece. Um Probably yeah, not another right. guy like that. So, yeah, I, I do think it could be concerning um, just in the sense of these guys need reps. I mean, they do have some veterans like Horst and Duplain and Samax played a ton, but you'd still like to see them playing a lot together. And their depth, maybe that's the one silver lining, I guess, because their depth right now is almost non-existent. And now they're sort of force-feeding themselves some depth by getting guys like Ethan Boyd and Kevin Wigginton and Brandon Baldwin, those 2021 recruits. Um, they're just, you know, they're just drinking through a fire hose right now, getting all the reps they can get. So maybe that'll pay off down the line. But uh, I do, I do wonder if it has some far-reaching effects where it it sets everybody's development back a little bit. Gotcha. And we're gonna flip sides of the ball here in a hot second. But I'm just gonna put you on the bench for about two, two and a half minutes because I gotta talk to you fine people about athletic greens. That's right. Do you want better gut health? Do you want more energy? Do you want an optimized immune system? Do you hate taking pills and vitamins and just want something that tastes great? Well, Athletic Greens has the goods for you. With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, adaptogens. They help you start your day right. And this special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your recovery, your focus, your aging. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every single day. How hard can that be? That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash college. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash college to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Also got to talk to you fine folks about Stat Hero and my bracket, uh, I, I blew it to smithereens. Laid the dynamite, completely blew it up, but Stat Hero is here to get me back on the wagon with their single game pick em contest that pits star players against each other in an amazing hybrid between fantasy and sports gambling. Take control back from the handicappers that always seem to have the advantage and start focusing on players that you know best with a gameplay that does not rely on big spreads, long odds, funky props. Here's how it works. They put their lineup out there. You see their lineup, and then you pick your players. You take them on head-to-head. -head. It's why Stat Heroes gamers are winning four times more often because they just eliminate the mystery about who or what you're going up against, and it is the easiest and fastest way to get your sports action fixed. So sign up for free today. Right now at stathero.com slash locked on and use promo code locked on for a 100% match. Stathero.com slash locked on, promo code locked on for a 100% match. One more time, stathero.com slash locked on, promo code locked on, terms and conditions apply. And before we bring Stephen back into the show, back into our graces, so I want to thank you for making Locked On Spartans your first listen every single day here in the Locked On Podcast Network. Steven, how did I do? Was that fine? Did, did I sell you? Did, was, was that good? Do you feel? Uh, like, it was great? good. I like the, uh, I just realized I got like the digital Collinsworth slide though. When you bring me yeah. in, it's like you're Al Michaels, you're setting it up and then I'm like sliding in digitally there. That's kind of what it reminded Isn't me of. Fun? So I like that. <laughs> See, if, if you're not watching on YouTube, this is what you are missing. Um, just two dapper Don't gentlemen miss. just riffing about ad reads. And Don't miss also the Michigan digital uh, Collinsworth slide in. Come on. I mean, it's you can't pay for that. It's priceless. It's fantastic. Um, Steve, I'm going to have you bang your head against drywall here pretty soon because I'll just talk about the, the big elephant in the defensive room. Is Amir Speed going to be our Lord and Savior, and is he going to fix everything for Michigan <laughs> State this year? Please, I know that you're probably just not nauseated yet about talking about the defensive backfield, but talk to us about the defensive backfield, Stephen. No, it's, it's interesting. I mean, it's um, that thing can go a lot of different ways. So, 
Uh, Amir Speed, I absolutely, uh, just like I mentioned with Brian Green, I absolutely expect he'll be a two deep player at worst. Um, with Speed, I'm probably even a little higher on. Uh, uh, not probably, I am a little higher on in okay. terms of projecting him as a starter. Um, I'd be pretty surprised at this point if he's not one of those two guys. Uh, he just, he's big. He's legitimately big. You know, uh, his name is what it is, and it's funny. And apparently he's really fast too, but that's the, the first thing you notice about him is that he's just huge. Um, he's, he's listed at six, three, I think like a shade over 200 pounds or something, but the six, three, you see it, he's legit. I mean, he's towering over most of the other DBs they have. Um, he looks sort of like a, like a, like an older wide receiver build just with that height and everything. So I think that's going to be really interesting. And they, again, they say he can run, they say he's fast. Um, I haven't seen as much of him, uh, in these practice settings that we've had doing much other than like position specific technique stuff. So can the guy actually play? Can he cover people? Can he hit and run and tackle and go get the ball? I don't know. People that have seen him tell me that he can. And have been, so. <laughs> I've heard good things about him since he got here. Um, and just in terms of the fluidity of his movement, his his intelligence and everything. And I think physically, like, like I said, he brings a lot to the table. When uh, when you have that 6'3 frame, you can jam guys and keep your arms on them and just make it really make life hell at the line of scrimmage. And if you win there, I mean, you might win the rep uh, a good amount of the time. So yeah, that that's a big deal. So I, all that to say, I think he will probably end up with one of those spots. Uh, the way things are trending right now, um, when we were there Tuesday, just for a little current info, like uh, they they weren't much better than the offensive line because you had Chuck Brantley in a red jersey, uh, yeah. non-contact, which was no surprise because he had the shoulder surgery and he's still working his way back. So he's been in that. But Ronald Williams and Marky Lowry both were in them too, and that's not good. So those are three of your top four guys um, essentially there. And then Kimbrough would be in that mix too. So yeah, that's, that's, the, I think I'm, I'm projecting speed at one spot. And to me, I, I'm, I'm a pretty big Lowry guy personally. And, and I've heard okay. good things about him. I think it'll probably be Lowry or Williams at the other one. Williams, Ronald Williams obviously has the experience mm-hmm. and he has some of that length too. He's about six one and, and a bigger dude. So you could have a really nice combo with, with two, two huge corners um, relatively speaking with him and speed. Um, I, I've liked Lowry a lot though, and I didn't think we saw the full, the real Lowry last year, just because he was hurt coming in, and he got hurt late, and he just didn't get a ton of opportunity. But in those small windows, I thought he played physical as heck, and yeah. uh, I thought he was good in coverage. I thought he was athletic enough. He was, he was stuck to guys. So I, I want to see more of him. I'm not so sure that he won't end up being the guy. I know competition is going to be fierce because whenever Chuck Brantley gets fully cleared back, you know he's going to be out there trying to knock everybody's heads off, um, right. which is just what he does. So he can't really fully be in the race right now, um, but at least I think you feel good that that you, you feel. I think you should feel good that you're going to get two good ones out of that group of four. Exactly who they'll be, I don't know. Probably Speed and TBD, but I think that that overall, I think I think the corner play will be better this year. A lot, lot of hype around TBD. Let me tell you that right now, man. That's, that's <laughs> and you got so some much, freshmen so too. You got a Day Willie. You got yeah, Caleb true. Coley here. Maybe that maybe there's a a dark horse in that group. You know, it's not. It's not unforeseen to see yeah. true freshman corners here uh, sort of, you know, make a name for themselves. So yeah, Aid Willie, who put Bishop Sycamore in a straitjacket last year. That's right. Can't uh, <laughs> discount any of these freshmen. Um, Stephen, okay, so defensive backfield banged up, offensive line banged up. Spring game, game in quotes, might be an open practice. Two and a half weeks away. Are, are me and you playing in this thing? Like, how how many injuries away are we from getting a call from Mel Tucker being like, hey, you guys want to play some? offensive guard or some uh so, some nickel uh, for us or yeah i mean maybe they just go seven on seven i guess i mean yeah they're they're two to three o-line you know uh bumps and bruises away from not being able to play the game of football um oh, i mean maybe, maybe you bump a tight end in and try to have him play tackle but like what is what's that doing for him what's that doing for your you know what's, what's anybody getting out of that right so um right. even today you know even if they only had seven or even say they had eight um chris kapilovic said yesterday maybe he'd get one more guy back this spring and didn't name that guy so i don't know exactly yet who that who that would be but um even if he got to eight like it's that's that's very taxing and what what type of look are you giving the jacob slades and simeon barrows of the world you know going against kevin wigginton with all due respect you know or guys like that that haven't played on the (laughs) o-line um what type of work is chris bogle getting you know against ethan boyd you know i don't know i guess but probably not the best, you know, look for, for his development. So yeah, yeah. Maybe they go seven on seven or something, but I'm, I'm expecting it to just be more like an open practice again, which stinks for, for those of us that just want to see some football. Um, it, it scratches an itch. It doesn't scratch the same itch though. So, mm-hmm. but I mean, it, you'd, uh, 
you prefer a staff, I guess, that sees that and takes the smart approach rather than just saying, all right, boys, line it up, you know? Yeah, um, that's, I guess, nuts. the way I see it. But it, it is tricky right now. Um, yeah. And, and go, did you want me to talk, to talk about the safeties, by the way? I didn't mention them when we you mentioned the backfield. But you know what? We're, we're, we're going to do a professional move right here. We will talk about the safeties in a hot second, Stephen. But I need to digitally swipe you away right now and talk to the fine folks about Built Bar. Folks, it's Built Bar. You've heard me talk about it for days, weeks, months, years, however long that you've been listening to this podcast for, uh, because it's the best protein bar in the world. And it is just great on the taste buds. Uh, this stuff is wrapped in 100% real chocolate, soft, it's chewy. It tastes like what is on the wrapper. You are getting treated to a delightful bar that tastes better than a candy bar, really, if you ask me. And also treats your body well because most Built Bars contain 130 calories, just four grams of sugar, just four grams of net carbs, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. Compare that to a candy bar that has like 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. Mm -mm, no, no, not for you. You deserve better. You deserve Built Bar. So go to Built.com right now. Smash in promo code LOCKED15. That's going to get you 15% off your order. Built.com. Promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your order. One more time, Built.com. Promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off of your Built Bars. Steven. I'm back. So about safeties. Yeah. So I had, during that break, I was like, man, should I have even mentioned that? Because I don't actually have a lot of clarity there. Um, I'm happy to talk about them, but in terms of final, I mean, I don't think there are final decisions. I think there's a lot. But that's, that's fine. Sometimes no news is news. Like, is there anything going on? No. Okay. That's yeah, probably good I, I for think us. It's, <laughs> it's very fluid uh, from what I understand back there. So coming in, like the plan uh, is even like a month or so ago, I was hearing that that Xavier, Hand it was going to look like the Peach Bowl. So X okay. Anderson would be a free safety. Snow would be a strong safety and Gross would be at nickel. And okay. that was all about um, allowing them to play a little more man because they just Snow and Michael Dow before him really couldn't play a lot of man. And even their corners, you know, Williams and Kimbrough, those guys that just weren't great man corners. Um, but they wanted to be able to mix things up and play a little bit more man coverage. And so Gross moving down there allowed that to happen. And so that was sort of the thinking that that would sort of carry through to this year. And I was like, huh, X Henderson as your center fielder, as much as I love the guy, um, you know, covering him and everything. He's a, he's great, great to work with. Sure. Um, best quote on the team by far. Uh, I was like, I don't know if he can cover that type of ground, you know, as, as your single high deep safety like that. So I was like, Ooh, okay, you know, we'll see how that goes. So um, again, in these two practice periods, we haven't actually seen any 11 on 11. Um, but I know X and when we talked to him the other day, he's been working at free safety and strong safety. Right. Um, I know gross has been moved back and he's been doing his thing back at free safety again. So I think, you know, and then the nickel, like Kimbrough, I know has been working there and Snow has been doing it a little bit. They pulled Caleb Coley, the freshman, over okay. there for some reps when I was when we were at practice the other day. Nice. Um, Dylan Tatum, true freshman early enrollee, is a guy who's working strong safety and nickel a little bit. Uh, AJ Kirk, I think, is a guy who could fit in at either of those spots. I haven't heard a lot about him, but he's a younger guy who came in uh, last year as a freshman. And uh, I think I'm missing one. Kendall Brooks uh, has been a guy oh, yeah. they've mentioned at Strong. Um, so it seems like there's a lot getting sorted out, and it's kind of like each piece obviously affects the other because if if they can get a guy at nickel they like, then maybe Snow can bump back to Strong Safety. He's been playing linebacker as well as, as a lot of people have written about. I've written about and talked about it and everything. That's, that's an interesting deal. I, I still don't know how much he'll be playing, but mm -hmm. you can obviously picture him being sort of a demon on third down just with what he brings. He's physical as heck. Um, and Mel Tucker said the other day he was, you know, taking on offensive linemen head on and, and you know, uh, just uh, taking on blocks with physicality and everything, which is a, is a smaller guy. Um, you really love to hear if, you, if that's what he's going to be doing. So I could see him playing some third down, some dime type of stuff. Um, but in terms of full time, he's one of your he's got to be probably one of your best players. Yeah. You know, uh, we, you you would think he factors into your best 11, if not like your top 15. So you're going to want to get him on the field. But just where do you do that? You know, when he was at nickel, he was basically an outside linebacker for all intents and purposes a right. lot of the time. And I don't know if he either is quick enough or just athletic enough to, to handle a, a, safe, a true safety role like a strong safety full time either. So I don't know where he'll end up. Uh, basically, all I can tell you at the, in terms of uh, with any certainty is that Xavier Henderson will start somewhere back there. Okay. Uh, maybe Perfect. Angelo Gross at free. He's at strong. Maybe he's at free and and. Somebody else is as strong, like a 
Kendall Brooks or Tate Halleck or something, AJ Kerr. I mean, who knows snow, you know, um, that's about the only thing I'm sure of, but there's a lot of mixing and moving and, and uh, experiment going on back there right now. And, I, and the guy I actually want to see uh, try play in free safety is Ronald Williams. And uh, that's not something that's happening as far as I know, but I just me personally, my little theory and, and uh, curiosity, I, I kind of want to see if, what he would do back there. And there's also one other position group that like fascinates me as much as like the whole running back battle. And it's because, okay, both the linebackers are coming back from last year. Cal Halliday, Quaver's Crouch. Okay, you also got some nice transfers though. And Aaron Brule, Jacoby Windman, like it, it, this is a bonafide position battle, right? Or like, I, how, how do you just see this whole thing unfolding? Because on one hand, like, yeah, you got two pretty good starters coming back, but also, wow, you guys kind of killed it as far as linebacker goes in the transfer portal. So yeah. G- good luck, everyone. I, <laughs> it went from um, position of, of just lack of, you know, with no depth to a position of strength very quick. Like I mentioned no kidding, earlier, right? la- a year ago at this time, they had that spring practice with six um, linebackers dressed. You know, and they had guys coming on the way at that point too and everything. So it was a similar deal to the O-line. But uh, within a year now, it looks like a real strength. I mean, I, I mentioned Snow. I think he's going to be a factor there. I don't expect him to start there. Um, okay. I don't even know if he'll play the majority of his snaps there. But like I said, I do think he'll be a guy that plays there. Even last year when it was clear that Cal Halliday and Crouch were the starters, you would see like in the third, second quarter, you know, late in the first quarter, some um, Ma, Nauteote, and Vince Summerin would be out there together or something. So they rotate those guys fairly often. And, uh, and just with the different skill sets of the current collection of guys, mm-hmm. I do think that there will be enough um, – enough, enough, snaps to go around to keep everybody fairly happy. Uh, Winman is a guy I think that just looks like your prototype um, type of three down linebacker. So I, I really think he'll push for a starting job. I think it's going to be really hard to unseat Cal Halliday. Um, yeah. So maybe those are your starters. Brule is sort of a um, like thinner, sleeker guy that I think would absolutely be a factor on third down or, or just pass rush situations or really anything. I mean, you got, you need those guys to cover a lot of ground. So I think he brings a lot um just in terms of upping your athleticism, whereas uh, I don't know if they did. They added bodies last year, but I don't think they got too athletic. Um, they definitely did this year, and obviously snow factors into that too. Uh, Crouch, I believe, will be back. He hasn't been out there at spring ball um, in any capacity, but he, I know he had surgery after last year, so I guess sort of TBD on, on what that looks like. Um, he's athletic as all get out, but uh, you know, the, just the, the refined um, scheme knowledge and, and just sort of uh, – football IQ and instinctual stuff for the linebacker position, I think still left a little to be desired. So yeah. as, as impressive as he was physically at some times, um, I don't think he was a guy that had an iron. I know he's not the guy who had any kind of iron grip on a starting job. So yeah, Winman's going to have all the opportunity. Uh, Halliday obviously isn't going away. I think Ma Nautaiote in year two is somebody that to, to watch. Um, then you said Brule and, and what are they going to do with snow? How does he factor in, you know? So they have options there, if nothing else. They have a lot of different options, a lot of different skill sets, body types that they can mix and match there, and that's intriguing, I think. And just last question here, and this could be a short answer. Uh, are, are, did the field goal kickers, were they making kicks when, when you were watching practice? That, I just want to know if they were making kicks. If you saw the ball go through the uprights, that's, that's all I want to know. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't even see them. I think they were probably outside and we were inside, so um, funny that they're, mm. that they're tougher than everybody else to go out in the cold and everything. Yeah, but, right. So <laughs> ironic. But no, so the, for just uh, to pull back the curtain, so we get about 15 minutes, um, okay. give or take 10, you know, uh, most the, the first five ish of that will be stretching and warm ups and uh, calisthenics and like motion very stretching, fun. things like awesome. that. <laughs> yeah. And it's like I said, so we get a very small window. I'm trying to make, I usually try to make like two laps around the field because then mm-hmm. the linebackers will be in this corner and then they run over there to go be with the D lineman for a second. And then they run back over here. So I got halfway around there and now they're heading back to where I just was. And every, so logistically all that to say, there's not a lot of time and a whole lot to see. Um, so I kind of got to pick my spots and I miss things sure. obviously, and uh, try to prioritize this or that. And um, with all due respect, the kickers just uh, hadn't, haven't been on my list lately. <laughs> and, and like I said, I think they're on a different field anyway. So Shoot. I wouldn't even be able to see it. I'm so you have not that. seen a kicker miss a field goal or an extra point then? Technically I mean, accurate. Like Let's yeah. go. All right. We're back. We're, we're, we're so back. We're so back. Let's go, man. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Well, Steven, speaking of back, it, awesome having you back on, man. Um, 
Great to be uh, there. I hope I didn't drain your batteries back down to E. Uh, I hope that you're still somewhere in the middle. Uh, but the, the, if, if I We're did, good. completely ruin your uh, refreshed vibes that you have. I apologize. And uh, p- please, please come back on later, please. I, I, I got you, man. No, I'm, I'm not done. I got to do another Collinsworth slide. I got to look up uh, wh- whatever. Uh, <laughs> I'll try and dress like him next time or something. And, and yeah. We'll back on. But happy to be on. Happy to be back. Happy to talk to the folks. Hopefully they enjoy it. And good luck with the new format, man. Um, Hopefully you get some better yeah, looking guests than me moving forward, yeah. Uh, the, the only way to go is down after here, let me tell you that right now. So, oh, uh, please. Steven, thank you. All the listeners, thank you for making Lock on Spartans your first listen every single day. Until next time, hey, we'll have a fun show tomorrow. We're going to be doing a lot of basketball talk. But uh, until then, go Green Gang. <laughs>